All right, good morning everyone. I'm really glad to be back with you all. I've missed the last couple of Sundays, and uh, but we're doing good. And just thank you all, and hello to the folks at home too. And uh, just uh, very thankful to be here. And I want to thank Pastor Randy for filling in for me. And I told him I owed him two sermons now, so I'll have to get them ready. So anyway, well, let's stand as we sing our first song, Oh How I Love Jesus. <clears throat> there is a name I love, I love to sing its words, it sounds as music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me, it tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of his precious blood, a sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus! Oh, how I love Jesus! Oh, how I love Jesus! Because he first loved me, it tells me what my Father has in store for every day. And though I tread a darksome path, you sunshine all the way. Oh, how I love Jesus! Oh. Because he first loved me, it tells of one whose loving heart can fill my deepest woe. Who when each sorrow bears a part, and none can bear me. Oh, let's say it now. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. All righty. Next song is, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to on his promise just to know the saith the Lord Jesus Jesus how I trust him how I've proved him more and more Jesus Jesus precious Jesus oh for grace to trust him more oh how sweet to trust in Jesus just to trust him in thing blood, just in simple faith to plunge me beneath the healing, cleansing flood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Just a tad. You've been around Cynthia too long. <laughs> I'm about to run out of air up here. <laughs> okay, let's see how we get along with this. Okay, just give us a chord. <laughs> yes, tis sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self to cease, just from Jesus simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust him, precious Jesus. Savior friend and I know that he is with me 
will be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. I'm glad you knew the words that last because it didn't get shifted over in time. Okay. <laughs> All right, you can, let's see, we want to do the greeting. Yeah, let's greet. Greet one another, and if you feel that you need to be at a distance, just wave, but it's your discretion. All right. as we make our way as we as we make our way back to our seats uh, good good to have you here Doug uh, and uh, uh, just appreciate uh, you know you you know what you miss when it's not here so um, um, and also um, something that was missing for those who were at home and there's some in the room that were at home and you were watching the the uh, service last week Keyword is watching. You couldn't hear a word, couldn't hear anything. Uh, um, there was a little button called on, on the microphone that, uh, that went out to Facebook that wasn't on. So I am hoping it is working today. Uh, it, it looked like it. I checked on my computer and everything. So, uh, so those who are at home, glad that you could be with us as, as well. So um, just uh, some... So, now, one of the sounds people's fault this time. Um, so, <laughs> no, no. Um, this this month, uh, the women on mission red box again. That is is uh, uh, women in prison receive from the the state um, uh, WMU uh, a box around Christmas time and so uh, every association is is having a collection our association is is simply getting sticks to, sticks of gum uh, though the, the collection ends uh, in just four weeks so make sure you get that in uh, on that as you get something else um, uh, and that is candy not my wife uh, but uh, we are going to be having something very similar to what we did last uh, last year and that uh, and weather permitting outside um, and uh, uh, kind of grab and go people can come get out have some have some fun things to do as, as uh, candy uh, is given out but um, we need and let me change the date on when we need the donations we need it on, by October 31st uh, that's the day that is that is uh, uh, that is that Sunday um, but we do need it in the morning we don't need it to come in that night okay so um, so um, uh, we'll, we'll take we'll take your candy anytime you can give it even if it's afterwards I know where it's going um, so uh, and then uh, <laughs> we uh, we've been having some sound issues on every time I, I I'll, I'll just take the blame last week uh, we was supposed to be our, our last week of the emphasis on our North Carolina missions offering and we went to play the video and there was no sound um, uh, again, for people at home, if they were still watching at that point, they didn't notice. Um, but uh, um, uh, the reason the computer's sound was on mute. So anyway, um, so uh, again, I, I like to be, for you to visibly see here's where this money's going. Um, and so uh, if you have not given yet, I encourage you to, to give. Uh, even if it comes in late, we can send it, we can send it on. And so um, let, let's watch this, this last uh, couple minutes of a video. I press it one more time, then it works.
The, uh, there's a couple mission camps um, uh, in, in North Carolina. This one's just an hour and a half south of us. Um, and uh, unlike the when there's a big disaster type thing, um, uh, all that, uh, the Shelby Mission Camp, and I can't think of another other one, I mean, it's year round. I mean, there's always projects and volunteers are always welcome uh, to, to, you have to kind of call and make reservations, but that's just an hour and a half away to go, hey, I want to help out on a weekend, or I've got a week off, I'd like to use it in, in ministry. And so, uh, again, that's just uh, another way um, this offering is going to being able to help, help families. And so, let, let's pray um, one more time for uh, this, this mission offering. And Jesus, again, I thank you that it is more than giving money to a good cause. It's also something we can be a part of. And so, uh, Father, I just pray that you put it in our hearts that, you know, one, <laughs> we, we do missions right here across the street, that, that we see needs. And in the name of you, Jesus, to meet those needs. Uh, and so, Father, I thank you in ways that we do that, but then being able uh, to, to work together with other, other churches um, in going into areas and, and being able to help, uh, again, showing your love in practical means. And so, Jesus, I, I pray that not only would you move us to give, but also to go and to pray. I pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I wanted to go over uh, prayer needs that, uh, um, and again, I always open, open it up for you might have other prayer needs or are aware of something uh, or even a, a praise. And so um, let, me, let me just go through uh, the ones that I have, I have written down. Um, Remember Lloyd, we've been praying for him for weeks, uh, as far as I know, still in, in ICU. And uh, just pray for him. Also for Mark and Leslie, um, as they're recovering uh, from the virus, uh, just remember, remember them. Uh, remember Frances, uh, she fell, broke her hip. Uh, she is now in recovery um, at Share, And so remember her. Um, Terry, um, uh, Judy's brother, um, uh, he is he is recovering from hip replacement, and so um, wanted to, to mention him as well. He's a good friend of mine too, and so uh, remember Terry. And then um, two things regarding for Tina's family, um, praying for the family. Her mother passed away. Um, and I know the service, services are later today. And so remember uh, the Benfield family. Um, but then also, and this is a praise and a prayer, um, uh, a new grandma. Um, but the baby came at 26 weeks. And so very much premature. And so if you'll pray for little baby Brixton um, and for all involved as well, as uh, this baby can gain strength and being able to go come home. And so uh, you mentioning, mentioning these. Are there other prayer needs? All oh, right. That never let up, did it? <laughs> yes. All right. Well, I know that there's there's others, and it is good to see to see uh, the Pearsons and the, and the Greens and Willises and, and others. Um, and just uh, I'm going to forget somebody, but uh, again, just uh, oh, and and putting Charles and Nikki, and and I know they haven't confirmed it with an official test, but just remember Charles and Nikki as as well. All righty. Well, let's pray. Let's, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I got another one. Yes. Thank you. 
That's that that notes on my on my desk. Um, uh, Ricky had another fall um, that further broke his. He already had a, a leg they had set, and and having to reset it. So remember, Ricky. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you that you are aware when, when no one else is aware. But God, here's some things we are aware of and making each other aware of. And whether the prayers are um, right here for people immediately in this church family, like Rick, like Charles and Nikki, like Mark and Leslie, like Francis, um, or for others that are close and have some connection, like, like for Lloyd and, and his needs, for little Brixton, I let this baby grow strong, for Tina's family with her mother passing, for Terry all the way and in uh, Newport News, recovering from the hip uh, surgery. We thank you. You are fully aware. You are there. And so, Father, we come with confidence that you know each and, each and every one of these needs, and you know the best way to meet that need that gives you the most glory, because that's what it's about. How can these crises point to you, Jesus? And so, Father, um, we thank you. We thank you for those who uh, can say, I'm better, I'm, 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 I'm good. Uh, again, uh, for the Pearsons, the Greens, Willises, and others. Uh, but then those who are still in need. Thank you that you are there for them too. Jesus, let us honor you. Let us show you. Let us share you. We pray in your name. Amen. There is one other announcement that uh, we are going to, uh, the Lord willing, have choir practice this week. So, because uh, the plan is for our choir to sing next Sunday. So, I'm looking forward to that. All right, let's stand as we sing our final song for the day. My shepherd will supply my need. Or the Lord is my shepherd, either one. It is. It's, it's what we're going to sing, anyhow. If you're on page 68, that's what we're going to sing, anyhow. <laughs> Beside the living stream, he brings my wandering spirit back when I forsake his ways and leads me for his mercy's sake in power. Uh, 
content me all my days. Oh, may thy house be my abode, and all my work be praised. There would I find a settled rest while But like a child at home. You can be seated. If you would turn to First Peter, Chapter Three. And I'd like to just begin uh, the message simply by reading uh, God's word to you, beginning in verse 8 of chapter 3. Finally, all of you, live in harmony with one another. Be sympathetic. Love as brothers. Be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult, but with blessing. Because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. For whomever would love life and see good days must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from deceitful speech. He must turn from evil and do good. He must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Who is going to harm you if you're eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you're blessed. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be frightened. But in your heart, set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Keeping a clear conscience that, so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. It is better... If it is God's will to suffer for doing good, than for doing evil. Jesus, we thank you. And I know we, we are at a point in this passage that continually brings up facing persecution, facing hardships. And God, I know there is a, a message that is pertinent for your people in the world we live in today. Not just what people faced uh, 2,000 years ago. So help us to be ready to live, to live right even when wrong is happening to us. So that you, Jesus, would be displayed. I pray in your name. Amen. <laughs> Living right in a wrong world. How long has this world been wrong? Uh, since the fall. This passage begins with a word. A word that many people in hearing a sermon love to hear. Finally, 
When have you ever known a preacher to actually mean that? <laughs> well, Peter says, finally, and if you look at 1 Peter and how long again, he's only halfway through. Um, but uh, what this points to, and in some different com commentary said, you know, he's introducing a new subject. And I'm like, no, he's, he's talking about what he's been talking about. And that is uh, facing persecution. Now, the, 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 the section before, uh, which goes back to, to even chapter 2, it is been talking about, you know, we're living in a world that, that we as believers are going to face persecution. If they persecuted me, Jesus said, they will persecute you and and in 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 certain areas that's seen in different ways but it's going to be true no matter where where you live and so he deals with how to handle that in specific situations and 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 we we go through and what does that look like with government and what does that look like on in the workforce what does that look like in the home and so that's what we've covered the last three weeks now he shifts and going okay i might not have covered your specific area and so here are some principles, here are some truths to remember when you're facing it. Um, and these are true for, for each and every one of the situations that have just been mentioned, as well as any others. Um, and so some general comments about how to live right in a wrong world. Here's the first thing. The need for connection with believers. It says in verse 8, after the word finally, all of you, now he's speaking to the church. He's speaking to the church that's meeting in this room as well as the church that's meeting with us online. All of you, we, we've got to connect. And, and here's the challenge in our day. And, and, and I understand there's people that are away. There's people who are, are sick. There's people who are scared and things like that. But listen, we can't break the connection. Um, we just got to get creative. Finally, all of you live in harmony with one another. Be sympathetic. Love as brothers. Be compassionate and humble. Because listen, listen. If the world is going to persecute us, we need to find a safe haven with fellow believers. So Peter says, here's some things that you need to make sure is true within the church as we deal with one another. Live in harmony. Literally, literally, be of one mind. Live in harmony with one another. Um, not uniformity, not, not, you know, but it's, it's, it's not letting anything break the unity. And, and isn't, isn't it sad when you hear of such and such church that they've split because of? I mean, it hurts me for the church because, because there, there's people in that church that are now disconnected and where do I fit? But it also hurts because of the testimony of Christ. Live in harmony. Like-minded means this. Agreeing on the main thing. Now here's part of the agreement. And that it is the main thing. <laughs> you know, we may be a little different on different subjects here and there and stuff like that. But the main thing is Christ and what he has done for us and salvation through him and him alone. Anything else is a minor issue. Let's keep the main thing the main thing. And that is what will keep us like-minded. Not, not always agreeing about all the little things because, listen, we all have different giftedness. We all have different strengths. We all have different viewpoints on different things. But look what Jesus said. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray for those who will believe in me in their, through their message that all of them will be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us that the world may believe that you have sent me. That we would be one. Doesn't mean we're all, listen, do you think Peter always agreed with John and Thomas and others? No. But they kept the main thing the main thing. In music, you have different parts. 
And we like how that sounds. You know, you've got the bass, you got the tenor, you have the alto, you have the soprano, and, and, and if you want to figure out which one you are, come Wednesday night at 7.30. A uh, little <laughs> commercial there. Uh, I'll get your money anyway. Uh, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, but, but, but it, it makes the sound, the, 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 the harmony and all this other stuff. But what is not harmonious is one person over here is singing Amazing Grace. At the same time, somebody over here is singing Standing all the promises. Now each one is good, but to singing them together, you're going to go, what's that noise? I don't understand it. That's what it means to be of one mind, to be, live in harmony with one another. Our challenge is, what's my part? So we can sing the tune of Jesus together. Feel with sensitivity. It says, be sympathetic. Be sympathetic. Uh, what, what does that mean? Well, Paul puts it this way in Romans 12. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. How can you do that? It means you need to be sensitive to where each of us are in different situations of life and all that so that we're close enough to be able to know your mourning. To know you're rejoicing. Paul also put it this way. Speaking of, of, of the body of Christ in, in, in the pictures of being a body, if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one's honored, every part rejoices with it. Be sympathetic. It's being sensitive to each other to know where we are in different things, in different situations, so that we can stay connected. Relate with affection. Love as brothers. You have different words for love, and this is the word that literally means brotherly love, family affection, that we as children of God makes us brothers and sisters, and, and we need to relate with one another with affection. This is so important that Jesus said it. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And John remembered Jesus' words and he wrote these words down. And then later on, as he's writing a letter to, to some churches in, 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 um, in Turkey, in Asia. He writes, we know that we've passed from death to life because we love our brothers. That that's just a sign of showing you are a true believer. Because anyone who does not love Listen, love includes what we've already covered. We're in harmony. We're sensitive to one another. All these things. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Relate with affection. Move with compassion. Now, I, I, I would have changed this to be moved with compassion. That communicates it better because I don't know how do you move with compassion, but, but uh, be moved with compassion. Uh, the, the word um, uh, compassionate means tender hearted. It, 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 is a, it is not just pity, you know. I don't know if y'all remember Mr. T. I pity the fool, you know. Um, but, but, but pity is seeing someone in need and, and thinking, oh, but it goes beyond that Oh, to action. It moves you. It moves you to see people in physical need. It moves you to see people in spiritual need. It moves you when your brother or sister in Christ goes through a crisis. What can I do? Um, one of the things that I love to see, um, and, and I don't always get to look at it, so don't trust that I read it, you know, is, is the prayer things that are going online and, and stuff like that. And it's just like so-and-so mentions, oh, I'm this is this. And then somebody says, oh, can I get you some food? I mean, it's, it's I see you're in a need, but I want to do something. 
to help in that need. Act in humility. Humility. Not humidity. We don't need. We, we got enough of that. Um, I love this time of year when it gets cooler. What is humility? Humility simply means I'm not thinking about me. Because I'm too busy thinking about you. It means I lower myself under you. Boy, is that needed in marriages. Boy, is that needed in churches. Can you imagine a church where everybody thought of other people more important than themselves? Isn't that what Paul says in Philippians 2? Act in humility. And so all of these things are just within the church. This, this could have been a message all to itself. And some of you are going, I wish it was. Get to the finally part, you know. But, but, but you know, this is just, okay, we're going to be continuing in different scenarios, in different ways. It's going to look differently. We're going to go through some persecution. So we as believers need to be connected, stay connected. And these things need to be true about us. But then there is a need in the midst of living right in a wrong world. For Christ's likeness with unbelievers. How did Jesus handle people who were not believers? People who everybody else looked at and said, they're the sinners. He loved them. He ate with them. He loved them enough to rebuke them. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. But instead, blessing literally means a good word. They give you an insult, you compliment them. <laughs> because to this you were called. So that you may inherit a blessing. In other words, for those who love to fill the blanks, respond not in kind, but with blessing. And here's, here's the end of the verse. And then you receive blessing. Not because they're going to make it right with you. No, because God is going to be the one who blesses. And then Peter in this passage quotes Psalm 34 um, verses 12 through 16. And, and again, I'm just going to read what it is. But he's, this is a passage of scripture he knows about when, when David was hiding away after he had feigned insanity um, and, and stuff. Because again, a fear of man. And, and he says this. For, and then the quote starts, whoever would love life and see good days. How do you get along? How, do, how are you going to live in such a way so that in general, life would be good? He must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from deceitful speech. He must turn from evil and do good. He must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on those are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. And so we do not respond evil for evil, insult for insult. And then he goes and says, this is my statement and then reading it. Living right will generally, you treat people good, general they're going to treat you in kind and that's what he says in verse 13 who's going to harm you if you are eager to do good and that's the that's the general principle that that if if you live right you're going to be treated right and that's a general principle that that most of the time is going to be true but not all of the time Because we don't live in a right world. And what should be isn't always what happens. But even if you should, now you, you probably won't. I mean, you live right, you do right, you treat people right and all that. It's generally going to be, you know, you're going to make more friends than enemies. 
But even if you should suffer for what is right. Here's the greater principle. The general principle, you do what's right and you're going to be treated right. But this greater principle is this. If you're treated wrong for living right, God will treat you right. If you suffer harm for being like Christ, you are blessed. Because here's, 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 here's me. Somebody treats me wrong, what do I want to do? I, I want to retaliate. You know, somebody insults me, I want to up the ante. <laughs> oh yeah? Well, I don't know. You know, and again, I've used this as an illustration all the time, but it's the Bugs Bunny Yosemite Sam's thing. Our Elmer Fudd. It depends which cartoon it is. Where one of them comes after with a knife. The other one then runs. Then he's running away because the other guy's coming at him with a sword. And then he starts running away because the other guy's coming out with a little pistol. And then the other guy's coming because he has a shotgun. Then, I mean, it just back and forth and only escalates. If you don't want escalation, you follow the principle. You just keep doing right. If you're treated wrong, let God be the one who blesses you. Look what Jesus said. Sermon of the Mount. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you. Do you feel blessed when somebody insults you? Well, Jesus says you are. Who are you going to believe? Your feelings are Jesus. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Not because you deserved it, but, but because you're being like me, following me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Jesus is saying, listen, you're in great company. That includes not only the prophets, but Jesus. He goes on a little later in the Sermon on the Mount. You've heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Okay, and so if your enemy says something, you say something worse and you get escalate that thing. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. And listen to this. He causes, he, the Father, causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good, that, that they have a nice pretty day and you have a nice, I mean, there, there's no distinguishing. He just still blesses, even though people are wrong. And he sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are you not, are not even the tax collectors doing that? And, and, and that was supposed to be a, a slam in that day. That was a bad thing. And so, so, so it's like, listen, listen. Are you going to act like a believer in Christ? Or are you going to act like a sinner? Back to 1 Peter. Be fearless in hardships. Be fearless in hardships. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be frightened. This is a quote directly from Isaiah 8. That's why there's quotation marks if you're wondering uh, why, why it's there um, in, in, your, in your Bible. Let, let's look at it in context of Isaiah 8. Do not call conspiracy everything that these people call conspiracy. Do not fear what they fear. Do not dread it. Are there a lot of people afraid right now? Believers, we need to be different. Verse 13. The Lord Almighty is the one you are to regard as holy. He is the one 
you are to fear. He is the one you are to dread. See, here's the principle. Fear not God, and you'll fear everything else. Fear God, fear nothing else. See, if you, and again, I'm not talking about, oh, God. You know, it, it, it is, God, you are the one. You are the Lord. You are over this. You are sovereign. I'm not going to let all the things that everybody else is scared about because I put you above all of that. And when we get there, all these other fears go away. Be fearless in hardships. And going on that thought, that God, uh, you're, the, you're the one, you're the one to look to. Then Peter paraphrases and turns it to Jesus. Be focused on Jesus, but in your hearts set apart Christ as Lord. And so don't fear, but, 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 but focus on Jesus. I focus on you and not what might be done to me. And then he says this, be ready for sharing. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. Now listen. All the stuff that we've read before needs to come before this. That when we're not fearful like everybody else is fearful. Or if somebody chews you out and says bad things that aren't true about you. And you do not respond in kind. But you trust the Lord instead. People will notice. People will notice the difference. And they're going to... Why didn't you say something back? Why did you let them walk all over you like that? I mean, if that happened to me, I would have. Or, or how come I'm scared about this, 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 and this? But, but you're just, you're, you're at peace. Why? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let me tell you about the one who gave me. The opportunity to share Christ. Now here's the thing. You know what most people do with that situation? Uh, you need to talk to my pastor about that. No. We as believers, if you're really a believer and you really have Christ in you, you are a unique witness of His grace. And God has put you there to be the witness. Be prepared to share Christ. Be ready for sharing. Be meek and defending. But <laughs> when you're sharing, when that opportunity comes, don't come with both barrels blazing. Okay? But do this with gentleness and respect. And you share. And you leave it to the Holy Spirit to convince. Unless the Holy Spirit leads you to push. But, but, and, and some do. But, but do this with gentleness. Share with gentleness. Well, I'm glad you asked. Let me get my 10-ton Bible to get you. you know, I mean, do this. Share Christ with gentleness and respect. Because at the end of the conversation, they may not believe. And if you end up going into an argument because of it, what are they going to remember? What happens when you start getting into an argument? You get defensive, and then they get defensive. And then it's not about Christ anymore. It's about you winning an argument. Be meek in defending your faith. Be pure in living 
do this in, with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. That when they try to pin something on you, if they try to say something negative about you, they got nothing other than your relationship with Christ. Be pure, living. This is the hard part. Be submissive to God's plan. It is better if it is God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. What happens when we suffer? God, why are you doing this? No. God, if this is your will, that I go through suffering. Let me shine you through the suffering. Well, how do we mean? What is God's will? I mean, God would never will bad to happen to me. God's will is found in Peter's next book, 3 9. Chapter 3, verse 9, the Lord is not slow about keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he's patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish. And some translations is, is the word willing anyone to perish, but everyone come to repentance. That's what God wants. That's what God desires, is people to come to Christ in faith in Christ. That's what God's will is. Well, at what price was God willing to reach the lost? God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. At what price was Jesus willing to reach the lost? He gave His life. Here's the hard question. At what price are we willing to reach lost. Are you willing to be misunderstood? Are we willing to go through hardship, whether it comes directly through persecution, or maybe you're going through some, some financial thing, or some health thing, or whatever? God, let me be mistreated. That means somebody coming to know Jesus. Isn't that what Jesus went through? Let's pray. Jesus, we live in a wrong world. And sometimes we are taken aback when bad things happen when we did good. We think about it logically and like, doesn't everybody want to go to heaven? <laughs> so wouldn't everyone want to receive Christ? But we forget what is a beautiful aroma to us is a stench to those who are perishing. So there's a pushback. And so Jesus, I pray, as our time here on earth goes on, help us to live right, despite the wrong done to us. Because so much more important than me getting my way or me getting all my things right and right and put in the right perspective and uh, is people coming to Christ and so God you have armed us with your word for going through suffering that is your plan So that brings the opportunity of people knowing you, Jesus. 
God, help us as a church to be united and, and being of one mind and, and, and being sympathetic to each other and humble with each other and all those things. God, brotherly love, all of these things because we will need it. And then when we are in the world, help us as, as your word says, being eager to do good. Be zealous for doing good. Even if it's misunderstood. Even if our good is met with bad. May we show you to this world. As our eyes are closed, our heads are still bowed. Maybe you've been going through it. But you're going through injustice in the name of Christ. God knows. Do not return it in kind, but return it with blessing. And then some in this room, maybe you've yet to come to know the Lord. You need to admit you're a sinner, and that's a, that's a push away. But all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And you need to believe that Jesus... It's God's Son who came to this earth, who lived a perfect life, who died on the cross, yet rose from the grave to purchase a place for you if you would trust Him. Today will you trust Him. And so Jesus, I pray for wherever we are, help us this week as we go through the things that just aren't wrong, right because we're in a wrong world. Holy Spirit, enable us to live and respond as you would want us to. I pray that you, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.